Hello and welcome to another installment of our Spotlight series where today's topic is digital transformation. I'm Gabe Storman. I'm a senior BPM on the Employee Experience Success Team. And today I'm fortunate enough to be joined by two of my colleagues in the MDEE community, Ed Novak, Regional Experience Lead, and Lisa Minikin, a Senior Business Program Manager. Ed and Lisa, thank you very much for joining me today to talk about digital transformation. As we know, digital transformation has always been one of the more popular topics for our customer engagement program. Customers are very interested in discussing Microsoft's digital transformation journey. Um, so I'm gonna get right into it. Ed, the first question is for you. Uh, what are the types of questions you generally hear from customers? Uh, that, that's a great question because there are, uh, there are some themes that both Lisa and I um, hear when we talk with our customers. One of the ones that I hear often are, what are the big enablers for our transformation at Microsoft? And when I think of that, there, there's probably three different pillars. The first one is culture. There, there's, a lot, there's a lot around culture and how it impacts the ability to transform, to transform your IT organization. The, the example I like to think about often is learn it all versus know it all. And it's, it's a term you may have heard before, but it's really important for our, our engineers and our, and our IT teams to think about you know, continuing to learn and not, not to get comfortable with the things that you think you know. It, it for one, it stifles innovation and it helps stop us from continuing to learn the business and understand what, how the, the technology is moving forward. The second one is our move to the cloud. You know, the, the flexibility and services we offer to our employees, wouldn't it be possible if we didn't have those services enabled in the cloud? We, we enjoy the flexibility of working anywhere we want, on any device we want, and really that was dependent upon those services being available in the cloud. And the third one is you know, security. It's, it's funny, when I started Microsoft, I, my first week at Microsoft, I, I plugged into my laptop into the, uh, the, the wall and I had access to everything, everything at the company. And the, pro the funny thing was is that I was trying to cl clean up my workspace and I ended up deleting all of these files, these source files from the Exchange server build at the time. And I had no idea, but I had access to data that I didn't need to have. So as we matured as a company, our security model matured as well. Now we're, we're leveraging this identity and the device health to give you access really to only the things that are relevant for your job. So those are the three, probably the big enablers that uh, we share with customers and, and they, uh, they share back with us too. So Lisa, the next question I'll pose to you, uh, when you're having a conversation with customers, how do you generally describe Microsoft's digital transformation journey? Um, thanks, Gabe. So uh, both Ed and I have had a number of opportunities to talk with customers at the Executive Briefing Center and during other engagements. And there's a slide that we like to use that really describes the before and after of our transformation. Um, in 2017, um, Satya Nadella um, sent out a note to all Microsoft employees that we're going to digitally transform Microsoft and we're going to start from within and start our transformation with Microsoft IT. So this slide shows the before and after uh, Microsoft IT structure is on the left side and our new structure during and as a result of our transformation is on the right. And this has been a really fun um, slide to share with our customers because it really shows the difference between uh, the traditional IT organization that we were and all of the changes that we have had and that we will continue to have going forward. Okay, Ed, the next one's for you. So IT organizations often have to struggle with building partnerships across different business units. This is not something that Microsoft is immune to. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, this is certainly an area where we've had some learnings and some challenges over time. And, and it's something that, yeah, you're right, organizations often struggle with as well, is how, how do we make sure that those business teams are leveraging and, and have a great relationship with the IT teams? There's, there's a few different areas I, I'd like to focus on and, and have a discussion with. The first one is related to executive sponsorship. There has to be some expectation that the business teams are leveraging the IT services. There also has to be an expectation from the IT team that you're, you're, you're responsible for making sure you support those business units. So that, that executive sponsorship, to, you know, everyone's expected to play nice in the sandbox is, uh, is, is needed. The other one I would say is understanding the business priorities. And I remember a term when I started in IT of, you need to understand the business better than they do. And it's, it's, it does ring true for an IT team to build that trust and partnership with the, with the business unit you really have to invest in understanding that business. 
And the last one I'll say is just consistent engagement. It's not just a one activity where you sit down and you have a discussion about the business outcomes. It has to be an ongoing relationship that you build that trust over time. So you really understand the needs of the business as they evolve and they feel like IT is really invested to understand their business and support them. So that's how I would, some great best practices that we've learned. Got it. So my last question is for you, Lisa. Um, along the way, what are some of the things that we do or that Microsoft has done that has surprised customers uh, with regard to the digital transformation journey? Uh, there, there's a few things that come to mind. I think the first thing and the largest thing that surprises most of our customers is our organizational structure. Um, Microsoft does not currently have a chief information officer. So that is really surprising to a lot of people, especially when we talk to a lot of IT organizations. Um, we currently have our IT functions distributed across several organizations at Microsoft. And that's something that is really unusual and um, something that's driven a lot of really interesting conversations with customers about how that's working. Um, something else that is very surprising is our shadow IT policy. Um, many organizations are trying to prevent shadow IT and we are now governing shadow IT through Microsoft 365 policies rather than trying to prevent it. Um, that's also been the topic of a number of conversations because it's something that a lot of organizations still haven't really thought of. Um, and then finally, I think we get a lot of you know, questions and discussions about when are you going to decide how your IT organization is going to be structured at Microsoft? Because we've gone through a lot of changes. And they're often surprised to hear that the answer is that we're always going to be changing. We're constantly evolving, always trying to find new and better ways of working. Um, and we use OKRs, objectives and key results to tell us how it's working. And that informs us on, is there something within our organization that we need to change so that we can operate more efficiently? Awesome. Well, that is going to do it for this uh, episode of the Spotlight Series on Digital Transformation. Uh, Lisa and Ed, thank you again so much for your time and for offering up your insights on this topic. Uh, appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thanks, Gabe.